Hey everyone, Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. I'm going to take a good look into some and some X today and really try and dive into what is the real difference because I still see a lot of confusion out there and this is just such key stuff, such key um, inf- um, knowledge that you have to master if you are working away in, um, in Power BI. It's just you just have to understand the difference between what sum does as an aggregator and what sum x does as an iterating function. <coughs> okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go through it just w- with some examples, and I'm hoping by the end of this this video, probably be won't be too long. Um, you'll have a really good idea. You have a much better idea of 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 the of the key difference. Okay, so the 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 best way to think about it is that. There's two, there's two sort of calculation engines, okay, with DAX. There's an aggregating engine and there's an iterating engine. Aggregations are things like sum or average or min or max or count. But iterator, iterations or iter- the iterating engines have an, um, formula. The formulas that call that engine have an X on the end, okay? And the main difference is basically what their name suggests, right? An iterating function iterates through every single row of a table and then works out some logic, whilst an aggregation function just looks at an entire column, which is left over after the context is um, is placed in front of a calculation or in front of a formula, and then goes and does one one aggregation in its entirety all at once, right? While SumX does a little bit more uh, work because it has to work through every single iteration of um, of a table. Okay, so what I've got here, let's have a look at what sum is doing uh, in this particular function here, right? So I've calculated up total revenue. If we have a quick look at our sales table here, um, so I'm just not going to do a sum of the revenue column. You got to remember that. You've got to always remember the context, right? The context of the calculation is date here, right? So this specific date is the context for this specific result okay so that's why we're getting this specific result because of the date which is coming from here flowing down the relationship hitting our sales table right and then our sales table is being filtered by that particular date and then if i just jump to it you'll see that we're then summing up this revenue column so what what happens is that the date gets filtered and i think the relationship is is linked up to the order date here so the date is filtered this date gets filtered in this particular table for that result and then sum just comes in and does one big sum up of the revenue column for, for whatever is left over after the initial context is doing the filtering okay but what sum x does it does it differently it calculates the results slightly differently okay so so what we can actually do based on the data in our model we can actually calculate up the revenue without touching that revenue column okay so i'm going to calculate up my revenue using sum x right and i'm going to go sum x and then what sum x always does is it always asks you for a table now it can be a physical table here but it can also be a virtual table that's probably outside the bounds of what i want to talk about in this video but for this particular um, example we're just going to input the sales table right the full table okay then what i can do is i can place an expression or a measure or columns um, from that table in this particular formula to then go and run some logic at every single row so have a look at what this says returns the sum of an expression evaluated for each row of the table so this is the iterating engine doing its work right and then i'm just going to go um, order quantity because i have an order quantity in that table and then i'm going to go total um, I'm going to go I think it's price unit price yeah unit price right because we have the price of the product in that table on every single row okay so I'm just going to push enter and then I'm going to drag this in and you're going to see the results are exactly the same right as they should be as they should be because basically this revenue column you know probably in this demo data was derived from these two particular columns but with that sum x I went and did this particular logic. I went and did that logic at every single row within the formula itself. That's the key thing, right? I didn't have to recreate anything in my sales table if I didn't need to. In theory, we could actually delete this column and still be able to retrieve the revenue um, number because we can self-generate it within a iterating function. The iterating function enables us to go through at every single row of this particular table 
order quantity times unit price. So we do it at the first row, we do it at the second row, and at every single one of those rows, the results are being saved into memory. So we do it row one, this is, is done, um, like, like so. So it goes um, order quantity times unit price saves the result into memory, order quantity times unit price saves that result into memory. So on and so forth, it keeps doing it and doing it and doing it. And then at the end, we then go and do the sum. We then go and do that um, sort of aggregation after all the iterating has happened. Okay, but we, we go and look at the uh, numbers saved into memory versus what is physically in our table. Okay, so look, I think that's really the, that's the key thing I wanted to, to talk to you about here because I, I still feel like, you know, especially if you're or relatively new and you're just getting familiar with formulas in Power BI, this is, and I see this in the um, the Enterprise DNA support forum quite, quite a bit actually, um, in that... <clears throat> Uh, users are still not understanding what, when should I use a sum or when should I use a sum x when I look at models. And so you should, you've you really got to um, have a good understanding of like when you th should theoretically call one or the other. The, the way the rules that I sort of stick by here is that if you can very simply use an aggregation function and it does, does it for you, then use an aggregation function. If you do need to run some more advanced logic at every single row, well then that's when you need to use sum x, okay? When some when an aggregation formula won't do the job and you need to do more, well then sum x is what you can actually utilize. And utilizing sum x um, enables you to really simplify down your fact tables, right? Because your fact tables are, are gonna be the tables with lots of information, potentially millions of rows, right? And you don't want to be having lots of additional columns inside of here if you don't need to. We, we, we don't even need this revenue column, as I mentioned earlier. We could just leave these two columns here and still retrieve the revenue numbers and just integrate integrate this particular f formula into all of the rest of our formulas and branch out into all the other calculations that we might want to do. Okay. Right, I think I'm going to round off there. Hopefully that was a good one for you if, um, you know, if you're still getting a bit confused between these two. And I think this will certainly help out a lot of, um, a lot of beginners out there. Okay, uh, if you got a lot out of this one, please um, throw the video a like. Um, as always, really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Um, lots of great stuff coming out to you all the time. Okay, talk to you soon.